name is Trent and I'm coming at you through practicemakesbettermusic.com. Today I want to talk about arpeggios and specifically uh, show you a pattern um, that I developed for you to be able to practice arpeggios through a diatonic chord progression in the key of B major. Now when we say diatonic what we mean is all within a single key and for the most part this progression I'm going to show you is all diatonic but I put one chord in there which is non-diatonic meaning that it's borrowing from a different key. Really, I don't think about non-diatonic chords as borrowing from a different key as much as focusing in on, on where they're going. So in this case, I'm in the key of B and the non-diatonic chord that shows up in this progression is a C-sharp major. The C-sharp major gives it a stronger pull to resolve to the five chord, which is F-sharp in the key of B. And I think that you'll understand what I'm talking about when we go over that. So what I wanna do first is show you the chord progression that I'm gonna base these arpeggio patterns off of. So I'll start by showing you the chord progression and then I'm gonna go into the arpeggio pattern which will be moved around, transposed to all these different chords. It's the same rhythmic pattern and the same intervallic pattern just adjusted for each chord type. So going from a major chord, major seven to a minor seven, you're gonna have slight adjustments but the intervals are going to be the same. And I'll go over that in just a moment. So. First of all, I'm gonna start with the chord progression. So, so my progression is gonna begin on B major seven. I'm gonna play this shape with my root note on the sixth string, seventh fret, eighth fret on the fourth and third string, and seventh fret on the second string. So I have one, major seven, three, five. Then I'm gonna go up to an E major seven. This is the four chord in the key of B because E is the fourth note of the B scale. Then I'm gonna to go to a C-sharp minor seven, the two chord in the key of B. This voicing where I'm skipping the fifth string and I'm on the ninth fret of all these strings. Second, third, and fourth string and the sixth string. Then I'm gonna to jump to F-sharp nine, which is a, uh, just a way, another way of playing like an F-sharp dominant chord, but this has a natural nine here. So we have one, three, flat seven, nine, five on top. Next I'm going to go from the five chord to the sixth chord which is G sharp minor. This one you can do the same shape we did up here for C sharp minor seven or you can do this one. Then I'm going to hit the only non diatonic chord that I'm including in this progression and that is a C sharp nine or a C sharp seven with a natural nine. Normally in the diatonic chords of B major, the second chord, C sharp, would be a minor seven chord. Just like we did earlier in the progression, that's the, the natural two chord of a major key. In this case, I am making it a major chord or a dominant chord, a major triad with a flat seven is what a dominant chord is. And this is a dominant ninth. The reason that I'm substituting this particular chord is because this is probably the most common non-diatonic chord that I come across, and this is the major or dominant two. What it's doing, in music theory, you'd say that this is the five of five, and that might be a little bit confusing, but if you think of the key of B, your five chord is gonna be an F sharp seven. So that'd be the five. Now, if we're playing a C sharp minor seven to an F sharp seven, that's a diatonic progression. So that would be a two, five. But if we play C sharp seven or C sharp nine, which is non-diatonic, meaning that these, this chord is not in the key of B, this functions as a chord leading you to the F sharp, which is the five of B. So this functions as a five of the five chord. So using the two chord of a key as a major or a dominant chord leading to the five chord is probably the most common use of a non-diatonic chord. There are plenty of other examples and you can really go outside diatonic harmony 
in any way you like, whatever sounds good to you, uh, because it's just a framework. But this is one of the first chords that I would think about learning to solo over if you're trying to figure out how to play over non-diatonic progression. So that's why I included, included it in this exercise. So each of the arpeggios is going to be directly from the key of B major, except for the C sharp seven. So from that C sharp dominant chord, it's going to go to this chord, which is an F sharp 13 suspended chord, which is just an E major seven over F sharp. And this is an interesting chord for a lot of the reasons, but it's basically just an, a pretty way to play a five chord in a major key. After the F sharp 13 sus, we're gonna resolve it to a B6-9. So the full progression goes like this. B major seven, E major seven, C sharp minor seven, F sharp nine, or dominant nine, G sharp minor seven, C sharp dominant nine, the non-diatonic chord in this progression then, F sharp 13 sus, back to B, six nine. Those are all the chords that underlie this pattern that I'm about to show you. So beginning back at B major, I'm gonna go over the intervals of the arpeggio pattern, and then I'm gonna show you how to move that pattern through this entire progression. The rhythm and the intervals are gonna be the same on every chord, uh, except for the F sharp 13 sus and the B 6 9 at the end. Those are going to vary a little bit. The rest of the time we're gonna be playing the exact same rhythm the exact same intervals, just adapted to each new chord in the progression. To begin the arpeggio pattern, I'm gonna start at B major, that's our first chord. And what I'm gonna do is on the E of one, so the second 16th note of the first beat of the measure, I'm going to start my pattern on the major seven. So if I count in uh, beats three and four of the measure before, I'd go three, four, one, E and uh, two, E and uh, one, E and uh, two, E and uh, rest. That's the first segment. So I wanna run through these intervals real quick. So we have seven, one, three, five, seven, nine, also known as two, nine or two, and then Three, and that completes the first segment of the phrase. So beginning on the E of one, so three, four, E and uh, one, E and uh, two, E and uh, just like that. One, E and uh, two, E and uh, that's the beginning of it. To follow that, we're gonna wait a 16th note rest after we hit the third, and then we're gonna go from the five to the seven to the six, which is not in the arpeggio, but just like the nine, these are a couple of notes that we're adding just to make it into a full phrase that we can practice. So we have five, seven, six, five, three, one. And in between those is another 16th rest. So to go from the beginning, we have one, E and uh, two, E and a uh, three, E and a uh, four, E and a, uh, and that's the full arpeggio pattern over B. I'm gonna demonstrate that one more time, saying the intervals as I go. So, so seven, one, three, five, seven, nine, three, rest, five, seven, six, rest, five, three, one. That pattern of intervals holds through this entire exercise on every chord that we're playing. So no matter what chord it is here, the seven of that chord, the one, the three, five, seven, nine, three, that, it, that pattern continues and we just are going to be transposing that to each of the chords 
other than, like I said, the last two. So moving on to the second chord of this pattern, it's an E major seven. So going to E major seven, we're gonna be beginning on the seven of E, which is D sharp, sixth fret, second string. We're gonna do the exact same rhythm and the exact same intervals that we did for B, but transposing them to this E chord here. So starting on the E of one, four E and uh, one, E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a. And notice that my pattern is slightly different because originally I started on the sixth string with B, then I'm moving to the exact same fret, starting position, but on the next string down. So my pattern is going to shift slightly. Notice how with this E arpeggio, I'm still doing seven of E. One, three, five, seven, nine, three, rest, five, seven, six, rest, five, three, one. Like I said, that interval pattern is going to continue throughout the whole exercise on each chord except for the last two chords. Next chord in the lineup is a C sharp minor seven. So we're gonna go back to the sixth string to start this one. And we're gonna start from the flat seven because this is a minor chord. We're gonna do the same intervals as we did before, but we're going to adjust them for the minor seven chord. So we're going flat seven, one, flat three, five, flat seven, nine, flat three, five, flat seven, natural six, because this is the second chord of the of the key of B, and that note A sharp is in the key. And then we go five, flat three, one, down the C sharp minor triad there. So like this, one E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a. Same rhythm, same intervals as before. Back from B, one. E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one, E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a one, E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a. Now that brings us to the fourth chord of this progression, not to be confused with the four chord of the key, but the fourth chord that we're going to be playing in this progression. This is F sharp, the five chord of the key of B, F sharp seven. So just like we did from B to E, from C sharp to F sharp is on the same fret of the next string down. So we're gonna start this pattern on the flat seven of F sharp, E at the seventh fret of the fifth string, and this pattern is going to be a dominant pattern from F sharp, starting on the flat seven. So from here, E, F sharp, this is flat seven, one, three, five, flat seven, nine, three. Then we have five, flat seven, six, five, three, one. So, in time, four, E and uh, one, E and uh, two, E and uh, three, E and uh, four, E and uh. And that's the F sharp seven version of this. So now we've gone through our first four chords, B, E, C sharp minor, F seven or F nine, Next chord is going to be G sharp minor. For this one, we're going to take our F sharp shape. We're going to go, we're actually going to start on F sharp because that's the flat seven of the G sharp minor. And we're going to apply the same pattern but the minor version to G sharp. So starting at the flat seven, we have flat seven, one, flat three, five, flat seven, nine, flat three, five, flat seven, flat six, 
five, flat three, one. Notice this is just a little bit different from the second chord, the C sharp minor, because in this position, G sharp, the sixth is actually a flat six, because this would be equivalent to natural minor, if you're familiar with your modes. So this would be a flat six versus the C sharp. It has the natural six, because that would correspond to the Dorian mode, which has is a minor scale with a natural six. So from G sharp minor, in time, four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. So now we've gone B major seven to E major seven to C sharp minor seven to F seven to G sharp minor seven. Now, now comes our non-diatonic chord of this progression and this is about the most in that you can get with a non-diatonic chord but like i described earlier this is functioning as a uh, five of the five chord meaning it's kind of pulling you back to that f sharp which really eventually want your ear wants to hear it resolve back to b it doesn't always have to but it very often does so this c sharp dominant or c sharp nine is going to be very similar to what we did for the C-sharp minor 7. It's going to start in exactly the same place and do exactly the same intervals, except that each of the flat third notes that we played for the C-sharp minor 7 is actually going to be a natural third to make this a major. So it's going to be a dominant 9 arpeggio. Um, so starting from B, so we have flat 7, 1, 3, five, flat seven, nine, or two, three, then we have a 16th note rest, five, flat seven, six, five, three, one. So in time, that's one E and uh, two E and a rest, E and a rest, E and a one more time. One, E and a, two, E and a, three, E and a, four, E and a. Now we have two more chords left. In this second to last chord, it's an F sharp 13 suspended, which is very often called a E over F sharp. E major 7 over F sharp, something of that kind. And this is just a little bit of a softer 5 chord than playing a dominant chord. The dominant chord sounds like this, or this, and major 7, but the suspe 13 suspended sounds like this. It has a little bit of a softer tone, but it's used a lot in, in all sorts of kinds of music. Um, so to play the arpeggio of this one, I'm going to start same as the other ones on the flat 7, but this time instead of doing the full dominant arpeggio version, I'm going to do basically like an E over F sharp arpeggio that gives us, really, really digs into the sound of that suspended chord. So beginning from E down here, I'm going um, in intervals, I'm going from F sharp perspective, I'm going flat seven, one, two, four, flat seven, one, two, four, flat seven. And the rhythm is going to be the same as the other ones we did. So it's starting on the E of one. So one E and uh, two E and a uh, rest E and a uh, four E and a uh. again that's one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a uh. that's the F sharp thirteen sus arpeggio. So to wrap it up, I'm going to play a little line on B major. 
This isn't actually a, a B major arpeggio. It, it includes an arpeggio, but it's going from the four to the three to the one, five. So there's a little major arpeggio. Just adding the four, three, one. So it's like a, just a major, B major arpeggio, just adding the four in each octave. So four, three, one, five, four, three, one. And this phrase also starts on the E of one. So one, how that last phrase goes. So I'm going to put on a backing track and play through this for you. I suggest playing along, trying to get the idea of it, then taking this concept and moving with it on your own. Pick an arrangement of notes like I've done here. Um, I picked a rhythm and then I picked an arrangement of notes starting on the on the seven, you know, going up, hitting the nine and then the third, you know, you'll get the idea, but you can do any arrangement of notes. I could have picked any other possible rhythm and any other possible arrangement of these notes to move through a key in order to get the most out of this. What I'm trying to accomplish here is to break out of ways of playing that are strictly linear, thinking in scales and thinking, okay, I'm playing a song in B major, so I'm gonna play a B major pentatonic. something I mean it sounds cool sounds great and and oftentimes I use something like that for a period of time in a solo but there comes a point in a solo when I want to break outside of that do something else give it a little more of a vertical dimension like you can with arpeggios so doing something a phrase like that gives me closer to a different place something that sounds different something that outlines the harmony much more closely, which makes what you're playing sound more relevant. So if you're just bluesing out over every chord, you can sound fine. And most people probably won't really notice that you're just bluesing out. But if you start to incorporate chord tones, arpeggios, shifting the notes you're playing to accent the harmony that's being played, you're going to have a much different effect in the way that you're playing sounds. It's not just going to sound like you're bluesing out all the time. Because you won't be. You'll be starting to break into the world of playing chord changes, which chord changes are challenging, but absolutely worth learning. And it's not only for jazz players, though jazz is where I learned to play over chord changes and was able to take that knowledge and export it out into any other style that I play because I don't only play jazz. Some people spend their whole lives playing jazz. I'm not that guy. I like to play all sorts of music, but I love the lessons that I can learn from jazz and that I have learned from jazz, like how to play over different types of harmony and how to improvise more interesting and you know different concepts about improvisation that I gleaned from jazz and from listening to jazz recordings. It really is a great teacher but you don't have to be into jazz in order to get into chord changes because even when you're playing pop music there's chord changes. Folk music there are chord changes. I mean even if you're playing a diatonic progression you could like I said, like I keep saying, you could just blues out, meaning you could just play pentatonic scales or you could just play a major scale. But at a certain point, you start to realize that if you bounce around the major scale, outlining these chords, you're not even on a diatonic progression. You can outline the chords in a way that sounds way more interesting than just playing scale notes, you know, playing scale ideas. And they balance each other really well. So sometimes you do want the simplicity of just playing some bluesy ideas. Followed by maybe a big arpeggio idea that's going to create more interest. There's a lot of ways to do this. And I'm not claiming that there's you have to be able to play chord changes. But I do think that you'd be limiting yourself if you were to not explore chord changes and how to play over them. Limiting yourself very greatly. So... Anyway, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put on a backing track, play through this at two different tempos for you so that you can practice along and hopefully get the idea. 
hopefully this inspires some ideas that you can take into your own playing. And I'm going to have another arpeggio lesson coming in about a month. Uh, so I'll be doing one of these per month. If you have any specific arpeggio related questions that you'd like me to do address in a, fur in a future lesson on arpeggios, just leave me a comment. And if this was helpful, please like the channel, subscribe, go to the website Practice Makes Better Music and sign up for the mailing list. I have some free stuff coming very soon for mailing list subscribers. So if you haven't checked it out, please go check that out. And here is the practice along workout to the backing track of the full exercise.